Welcome to worship for the week of Sunday, November 29th, 2020. We are so glad that you have chosen to check us out on YouTube at South Yuga Community Church. And we look forward to being able to greet you in person when we return to in-person worship, hopefully in the near future. acknowledge that we worship today on land that was walked for thousands of years by Indigenous people, the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. We seek to steward this land once known as Turtle Island and to live in right relationships with all peoples, Indigenous settlers and newcomers, as well as all of creation's beings. Hi there. I'm Pastor Dawn, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about a couple of things coming up in our worship service today. First of all, part of our service was taped today in front of a live congregation, and so you will notice that maybe I'm not looking at the camera enough, um, and I apologize for that. It's our first time, and um, we're hoping to make improvements as we go forward. So please forgive me if things are uh, not as, as they normally are. Uh, we did have folks here in the sanctuary today when this was taped. And so I also wanted to mention that you are invited to join us on Friday afternoons at 1 p.m. in the sanctuary if um, that would be helpful and meaningful to you or to someone um, that you know is not able to access the YouTube worship service and is feeling um, that they're really missing the church and the sanctuary and not quite getting enough out of the paper service that they're receiving, they are welcome to come on Friday afternoons at one and everyone wears a mask and social distance. Um, is uh, observed and all of the COVID screening questions are asked at the door and uh, it's just a, a 10 to 20 minute portion of the service that includes the scripture and reflection but uh, I just wanted to throw that out there uh, for folks and let you know why things look a little bit different this week. And the second thing I wanted to let you know about is that there is communion coming up today. So if you would like to gather elements for yourself or your family, whoever's watching together with you, um, it doesn't have to be bread and grape juice or wine. It can be whatever you have handy. It could be a bagel. It could be a cracker. It could be a cookie um, or a delicious square of goodness, whatever you have handy. Uh, can become your communion today. And with that, uh, we'll get started.
Let us pray. Holy God, it's Advent. We're stepping into the coming season, anxiously awaiting the arrival of Christmas, and we're not at church. We're not worshiping in the sanctuary because it's not safe. We're not hosting parties or attending gatherings with our friends and family because we don't want to spread the virus. But God, we're going to praise you anyway. We're tired. We're tired of COVID statistics, God, and safety protocols and color zones and restrictions. We miss not having to worry about masks and hand sanitizer. We miss hugging the people we love. But God, oh, holy God, we are going to praise you anyway. You are with us in the midst of this storm. Thanks and praise to you. Amen. Our opening hymn is Standing on the Promises, taken from Worship His Majesty, number 601.
poet Emily Dickinson wrote, Hope is a thing with feathers, the perches and souls, the psalmist declared, I put my hope in you all day long. Hope is more than wishful thinking. Hope is the spirit of God dwelling within us, reminding us we are never alone. Hope is our active commitment to be God's faithful people. Whether we walk an easy path or a face of uh, fiery trails, when we light the candle of hope, we embrace God's presence among us today and yesterday and always. Whatever we encounter along the road of life, we're going to praise the God of hope anyway. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, in this season of gifts and giving, help us to accept with joy the great gift of sacred scripture. As we unwrap the readings for today, bless us in our receiving of the wisdom of our ancestors in faith, Amen. Our first scripture lesson today comes from Daniel, and it's a bit strange, but he, Daniel is actually talking and he's describing a dream that he's just had. So it's Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 to 28. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times, ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night I looked and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kings that will rise from the earth, but the holy people of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying with its iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell the horn that looked more imposing than the others and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom, and then another king will arise, different 
from the earlier ones, he will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times and a half a time. But the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Our second reading comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 9 to 11. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the Sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And finally, our Gospel lesson today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 67 to 79. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servants, David. As he said through his holy prophets so long ago, Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham. To rescue us from the hands of our enemies and to enable us to serve without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, my child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. There is wisdom in those biblical words and love in our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts bring you glory. Amen. A regular question in childhood is, what do you want to be when you grow up? I remember being asked, and having a different answer almost every time. But my 10-year-old son, Brady, when asked that question, he almost always says, a mechanic. I wonder what you dreamed of when you were a child. What did you dream of becoming? I wonder what you dream of becoming now. As we mature, we often stop think about, thinking about it, or at least, People stop asking us. That's it there. People stop asking us what we want to be when we grow up because they see us as grown up. But do we ever really stop dreaming of becoming? We're constantly growing and learning and thus becoming. We just don't talk about it. I wonder if children ever dream of becoming custodians. I had the best custodian at Caister Central Public School when I was a kid. His name was Don Waite. He walked with a limp. He wore a navy blue work pants and a work shirt with his name embroidered on it and work boots every day. 
he was friendly and kind. I can picture him standing in the doorway of his cubby, leaning on a broom as the students packed the hallways, heading outside or, and then back in from recess. Mr. Waite was always ready to dry up the mud and snow and neutralize really gross messes with sawdust and strong astringent. He was a mainstay, steady, dependable, and comforting actually, always a familiar face no matter what else was going on. I wonder if Mr. Waite wanted to be a custodian when he was a kid. I wonder if he dreamed of becoming something else when he was a custodian. When I first read the sentence by Brian McLaren in We Make the Road by Walking, Prophets in the Bible have a fascinating role as custodians of the best hopes, desires, and dreams of their society. I thought of Mr. Waite. I realized that McLaren was talking more about custodians as keepers and holders than of janitors, but Mr. Waite was a lot more to me than the guy that cleaned the floors. He was the guy with the giant set of keys hanging from his belt that opened every door and every cupboard in the school. He was the guy who fixed broken windows and salted icy sidewalks and dried slippery floors and sanitized high-touch surfaces before it was the in thing to do to ensure that the staff and students were safe. He was the keeper of the school. I wonder if anyone ever dreams of becoming a prophet, a keeper, or a custodian of hopes and dreams. Brian McLaren goes on to say that the prophets challenge people to act in ways consistent with their hopes, desires, and dreams. I wonder if anyone ever dreams of becoming a challenger of people, a life coach, a motivational speaker, a teacher, a mentor, an aunt or uncle, a parent. Just a few examples of the kind of people who challenge other people to act in ways consistent with their hopes, desires, and dreams. Have you ever considered yourself a prophet before? We all have challenged someone to act in a way that was consistent with their hopes, dreams, and desires at some point in our lives. Maybe not as a career or in a way that makes the six o'clock news, but we've all pushed someone at some point in a meaningful way. Zero Dean said, you may never know who your actions, words, or creations inspire, but those who appreciate these things you offer to the world are out there, even if they are not always visible to you. For every person who takes the time to acknowledge the value in what you have to offer, there will always be others who won't. The lack of not acknowledgement does not make what you offer any less valuable, especially if you already believe in and see the value in it, and it's important that you do. Never hesitate to express thanks or send a kind word to those who touch you in a meaningful way, be it through their actions, words, or works of art, because you also never know how your own gratitude becomes the fuel that touches and inspires those who touch and inspire you. Wise words. The prophets of the Bible also said wise words. They said glorious, beautiful words that were written down many years ago. They prophesied the work of John the Baptist and the coming of Jesus, the birth of the Prince of Peace, the gift to all of humanity, hope. In Isaiah, they wrote, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of the roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, 
the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. Isaiah's description of that better day were so inspiring that Jesus and his early followers quoted Isaiah more than any other writer. But many other prophets added their own colors to, their, to this beautiful vision of hope. Daniel, that we heard before, envisioned the world's beast-like empires of violence being overcome by a simple, unarmed human being, a new generation of humanity. Hope is what humanity needs today. Hope is what guides us to act now. You see, desires, hopes, and dreams inspire action, and that's what makes them different from a wish. Wishing is a substitute for action. Wishing creates a passive optimism that can paralyze people in a happy fog of complacency. Wishes are for blowing out birthday candles and scattering dandelion seeds. We don't say, what do you wish you'll be when you grow up? We say, what do you want to be? What do you hope to be? And hope requires action. It's not dormancy or shallow. Hope requires strength strength given to us by the Holy Spirit. As we journey towards Bethlehem, towards the manger, towards Christmas, may the candle of hope that was lit today light a hopeful fire within us, a fire that reflects the light and love and hope of Jesus in the darkest corners of our homes, our families, our communities, and our world. A blazing fire that ignites action. We are not passive wishers, we are active hopers. To be alive in the adventure of Jesus is to have a desire, a dream, a hope for the future. It is to translate that hope for the future into action in the present and to keep acting in light of no matter the disappointments, no matter the setbacks and delays. Let us keep the flame of the ancient prophets glowing strong in our hearts, even now. Let us pray. Living God, help us to live this day in the light of hope rather than the shadow of disappointment. Help us to remain hopeful despite the tumult and turmoil surrounding us. Help us to rest in a living and active hope. We hear the haiku that has been shared worldwide. We isolate now, so when we gather again, no one is missing. And we need your help to live into that reality in hope, rather than in disappointment and despair. Holy God, we pray this day for your gift of hope to reach those who are living with war, violence, and danger around the world. We pray for those who are living in poverty, those without enough food to eat, those without clean drinking water. We pray that your hope will permeate the hearts of those who are overwhelmed with grief, with loneliness, with sorrow, with disbelief, with fear, with dread. We pray for those living in retirement homes, nursing homes, assisted living facilities and group homes, those in hospitals and rehabilitation centers. 
We pray for the staff of these places as well, Almighty God, that their actions and words might be hope-led and hope-filled. We pray for the people across Canada whose environments have been shook by COVID-19, whose lives have been turned upside down, whose restrictions have significantly changed lives and further separated the haves from the have-nots. Almighty God, we pray for healing. We pray for actions for the good of all and for good moral behavior. We pray for a vaccine. We pray for an end to the pandemic. Giver of all, we pray for the gift of hope to settle over us all like a warm blanket, that we might be grounded in the knowledge that Christmas is not canceled. The gift of hope, the gift of your son Jesus does not disappear if we can't eat turkey and pie with our families. May our gratitude overflow for your ever constant ever-present, everlasting, never-ending love and hope. In the name of Jesus, who taught his hopeful friends to pray together, our heavenly parent, our mother, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is found in More Voices, number 169. When hands reach out beyond divides.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and right it is to give thanks and our joyful duty to give God thanks. For in the beginning, God, you dreamed of a world that would be good, of mountains, valleys, and oceans, of the changing of seasons, of laughter, and the magic of music, of a creation united with you in love. You dreamed of this world, O oh God, and you formed it into being. And when we who bear your image in this world turned away from you, you did not turn from us. Rather, in love, you held fast to your dream working, shaping, and suffering to make it reality. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place. supper he took the cup and he gave it to his friends saying this cup is the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me great is the mystery of faith
the gifts of God for the people of God. Bread of life, be light in our darkness. Christ is the light of the world. of salvation be strength for our journey. Christ is the hope of our world. Amen. Let us pray. God of pregnant expectations, God of promise, God of childlike hope, we have eaten and drunk from your table. May the eating and the drinking fill us with hope in a world of despair. May we be beacons of hope as we wait for the day when the world will be changed. Grant that this taste of your banquet, which is to come, would give us the hunger for peace and justice in our community and around the world. Assure us that this is not a hollow dream, but a dream we share in together. Amen. Our closing hymn is found in Voices United, number 158, Dream a Dream. to participate in the creation of a new world. We affirm the hope that turns suffering into a creative process. We affirm the hope that enables us to act. God, we hope. Help us 
to hold together. will find within us a response beyond our wildest dreams. Go forth ready to connect with others and share joy and compassion. Recognize your loneliness and offer friendship to others who are lonely. Be aware of the selfishness within and around us and confront intolerance. Give generously and receive graciously. The love of God will find a place in our bubbles. In this coming Advent week, go live hopefully in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.